This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Rated TV MALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Join me, 48 Hours correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Oh my gosh, there's more. Whose story Aiden, is it? Aiden Fucci. You know, he's his sentencing oh, happening yeah. right now. Okay. Ooh, let's catch everybody up. This is exciting. I love when there's updates. Yeah, apparently one of her sisters was doing the like I guess giving the impact on the impact statement and had a bunch of marbles and was dropping them one by one. For each in, time. Yes, for ah. each stab. Oh my goodness. I, I that a, made it more impactful. Yes, but it did. But he wasn't going to get off. I mean, you know what I mean. Like oh, he's going to yeah, get the yeah. worst of the worst. Yeah. Well, but yeah. my goodness, I'd have done that for my sister too. Would your sisters have to drop marbles for each time you would? They'd step? be like, "Oh, finally, get <laughs> done with her shit." <sighs> they would. Oh, Lord, freaking Valo over here. Oh, She's being I'm transported. Right for you to do that story. Well, now I, I want to do it after the trial. You didn't do it for Murdoch. I did know. It right before this is like the timing. I know. I'm pissed. I'm so mad. I ha- do not like this judge because he's not allowing cameras in. Although there's supposed to be audio, oh, it's not the it. same. It's just not this. I'm. I still listen to it. I'm still gonna, li- but it's not live. Mm. It'll be like a. Afterwards, pre So I don't know who's covering it on my people. But. Hey, y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show did. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey, y'all. This is April. And this is Caroline. And we got some stuff. Oh, we got some updates. We got some updates and some new stories to be obsessed with. Everything. I get excited for Tuesdays. Maybe more excited for Thursdays because I get invested in these stories. Yeah. So let's start off with any updates. What do you have? Um, well, Lori Vallow, of course, her trial's about to start, so April third. April 3rd, unless something, some kind of miracle happens and they decide that they're going to televise it, it's just going to be audio okay, and whatever, but still, it's happening, it's going, let's just hope it goes. Yeah. Um, Bust, um, not Buster, um, Stephen Smith. Homicide! He is now... They're now doing a murder investigation. They're saying it is now a murder. I found I heard last night on News Nation that they had also previously, years ago, had performed a rape kit. Mm, why would you perform a rape kit mm. if it was an accidental hit and run? Hit and run. How does did a car rape you? Yeah. Did the did the muffler go up his ass? I guess. I've never seen that happen, but obviously. Where is that autopsis? And whoever signed all the Qu- coroner. Because they were still cro- all crooked. Crooked. They need to be next. Aiden Fucci is going through his sentencing right now. He's the one who stabbed Tristan Bailey 114 times. Mm. And he, the day his trial was supposed to start, he pled guilty. Which was like, oh gosh, they didn't they didn't expect that. They expected to do a trial. So apparently, and so there's they're having all the um, family come in do a victim statement, victim impact statements. One of the sisters of Tristan came in and her part of her statement was she had a glass of marbles and she took one marble out at a time and dropped it into the glass just one by one 
114 times mm. for every stab. For every stab. Um, so impactful. Yes. The... Uh, he, Aiden, wrote a letter to the judge, says, Dear Judge Smith, my name is Aiden Fucci. I'm 16 years old. First off, I want to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all this pain I've caused to the Bailey family. I'm sorry to the friends, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, and family, relatives. I'm sorry that you didn't get to know her that long. You didn't have any relationship with Tristan for that. I'm sorry. Uh, for the community, I'm sorry I brought all this pain and everybody, and I'm sorry. I know my apology will not fix anything or bring her back, but I hope it will in some way. And for my dad, I'm sorry that he had had a bad spot in his work because of me. Oh, oh. yeah, because this business, like, tanked. Oh, yeah. I miss being outdoors with my dad and brother. I miss the fun we had, like, four-wheeling, paintballing, going to— I mean, this kid is, like, 17— 16. Why has he never mentioned his mom? Oh, she's next. Okay. Uh, I miss the fun we had. I miss going on trips. Dad, your, your made things going along. I don't know. I can't read this. You made everything fun. You're special because you made it fun, blah, blah. To my mom, I want to say thanks for washing my bloody pants. No. <laughs> I was like, what? Thanks for having my back. <laughs> Thanks for uh, going to jail for me. Um, I want to send my apologies as well. I'm sorry that she had to move her house because people were sending threats to her house and my family and that my little brother and sister had to change schools because of me. Uh, Mom, now I miss your lemon pepper chicken. <laughs> I miss your hugs. I miss you. The longer I'm in here, the more I forget the memories I lose. The more I forget and the more memories I lose, I'll never forget you love me, Aiden. Bucci. Mm, okay. Just his whole life. Question. Yeah. Is it better when they say something like that or when they say nothing at all? Because a lot of times we're at these trials and like they, the killer never like responds, never says anything. Murdoch didn't really say anything. He just mm -hmm. kind of responded to... The judge. Uh, I so like, how do you I, feel about it? I do like that at least you're, even if you don't feel remorse, at least you're pretending, pretending. The, to feel remorse yeah. to try to lighten up your sentence. Because that's what this is, is him attempting to not, to be in there for, what, 30 years instead 30 of 50 years. or something. Oh, yeah. But I think it, I think he, you, that's what you should do. Um Okay. But I I don't know. I don't know how much it helps, but what do you think? I don't know. I don't think people are happy either way. Oh, like we're I not don't happy think when they get yeah. a letter. We're not like, oh, poor baby. And then when they don't say anything, we're not happy either. So yeah. I just think it's a... I think I'm more like, well, you should be sorry. But at least you said it. Maybe you do feel sorry. But it, you go back and forth. Mm. I was thinking about the 114 marbles. Sometimes in trials, they'll like, if something happened for two minutes, they'll make everybody like stop for two they minutes. They did that at the Murdoch trial. They were like, th it's talking about it took 20 seconds to do this, uh -huh. and they started the phone timer yeah, and everything. Yeah, because hearing it, it's like, oh, 20 seconds. Yeah. But going through it, it's, yes. you really know. Yes. So then 114 times, there's no doubt that's a lot. And if it took her a while just to drop the marbles, imagine, like, he actually has to put a knife through flesh. Yes. Multiple times and come back and swing. Even if he took breaks. Like, if he went all six. And succession, that's, succession. like, a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And it's even longer if he took breaks. So, I, I like that sissy why, did that. Why Good did job, you sister. need to do, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, w I guess I like, I Get mad that they say guilty. I mean, I'm not, but I want to know why they, why did you choose to do, what was your, why did you do that? Yeah. Why? Yeah. 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 That's why I love Jeffrey Dahmer because he told us everything. I wish everybody would yeah. be a Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, at least not he get, no, kind of explained confessed. what his everything messed up is. process was. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Good update. So right now, um, in real time, this just in, well, half of this is ju just in. Um, think about two weeks ago, we talked about Nathan Millard. He is oh. the, the dad from Georgia. They went to Baton Rouge on a work trip and ended up rolled up in a carpet. Mm -hmm, People had stuff. no idea that was ha what was happening. No. You thought he had a gay 
gay lover and and maybe got a hotel and something happened. Mm -hmm. We were all thinking overdose, overdose. That's what the police said, overdose. Well, they have arrested a guy. I done already lost his name, who is known drug person. Damn it. Derek Stanka Perkins. Stanka. <laughs> okay. So he's been arrested, and he's the one that led people to believe that he, like, had an overdose and stuff. Is it saying? Yes, yes. Uh, it says, documents say that Millard's family received an anonymous phone call claiming that tourists that he was possibly given, quote, bad drugs as a part of a setup and detailing an alleged scheme by Baton Rouge drug dealer to relocate the body so he could claim the reward for finding him. <laughs> Did he, like, drive what? around? What? That's what this one says. Yeah. Didn't, didn't they say he drove around with the body in his car for, like, four days? I read that somewhere, too. I've read so much stuff on it. Oh. Or I'm just, like, I don't, over the... I literally have, did not even see that part. I just... Saw that when I saw this, that now there's an arrest for two other women, two women that are prostitutes. See, this says the revelation that, and there is, there's been a slew of warrants. So I'm guessing there's just like, it's a piling up of all this stuff coming and together. who is talking? Like, who is telling them this stuff? Uh, Stanka? I guess. Wow. So the women's name is Tabitha Barner and Tiffany Ann Gildry for their involvement in the Millard case, whether they are the ones who rolled him up and disposed of him or whether they helped babysit his body in the days that he was gone. Um, and one of them has an active arrest warrant for prostitution and failure to seek assistance. You know, there's a lot of get rich schemes out there, you know? Yeah. I just never would have put this one on the list. Hide a dead body so that you can claim the <sighs> I have no idea. arrest money. I, I just, I don't. No, that, please work or keep prostituting. Um, Let's see this. Let me see if I can find what else it said about it. Oh, did you see the part where they said that um, the security guard at the bus station... I guess he ran into the yeah. security guard. The uh -huh. security guard asked him if he needed a, wanted him to call him a ride or something because he lost his cell yeah, phone. Yeah, and he said no. But this, he's, he ref yeah, he refused, and he told the security guard that he was looking for something to make him feel better and a girl to take back to his room. Quote, those are both quotes. Oh. Why is he saying that now? He didn't say I don't, that first time he was questioned. Well, he could have. They just maybe couldn't didn't release it. Yeah, and then it goes on, reportedly left the bus station with... A pro with Perkins, a prostitute, and a man that was identified as Clay. Wow. When you, and then uh, like it's his wife's back at home with all their kids, and she's like, "What? I you Not think one she... prostitute, but two? Well, here's the thing: you don't just decide to do drugs on a whim one night. I I don't think." I don't think you Especially at 41 years old, either you've you had know, a past. Did I tell you the time that Dirty Chad had a work trip in Austin? Yeah, it's in the story. Oh, it's in the save story. it for the story. Because um, he probably was doing this stuff, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, so I think she has had to have known that he probably dabbled in drugs. Like, that wouldn't yeah. be a... Yeah. I don't think that that would be a and shock. Maybe, I wonder if she... But... But do you just dabble in prostitution? I feel like it kind of comes with it, but I've I always thought that I never I never had a feeling of I was being cheated on. I never thought that there was anybody else because sometimes he wouldn't even want to do it stuff. So, you know, like yeah, but and that the number one clue of he already probably already done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I thought you want to you you're so focused on getting drugs. Well, that's what you were hyper. You were more focused on. And this like, is after the fact. Issue. This isn't like during. Like I didn't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I'm like after the fact, and I'm like, surely you're you were focused on dr like you were going to a hotel and doing drugs. You weren't going to a hotel and doing a prostitute. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and or both. I don't know. But apparently this guy was going to the hotel and doing both. Doing both. He probably got fentanyl. Well, and some of these drugs are sexual drugs that make you want to oh, yeah, do like X the, or yeah. something. Yeah, X, and I heard Did meth kind of was? was. No, but Dirty Chad's was cocaine, and I don't know if cocaine makes you do. I think it was laced with something, like fentanyl or something. This. These people? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, that's just a guess. All right, so let's go to some new stories. Did you hear about the family feud killer? The the guy who talked, yes, I just that saw the clip. I saw feud? the clip. Yes, okay. I posted it on so, my story. Now, um, we're in Illinois. 41-year-old mother of three, Rebecca Blefnik. I probably didn't say that right. Was found dead in her home. She had multiple gunshot wounds to her body and head. She was found by family members after she did not pick up her kids from school. Oh. This was um, on March 13th, so just the other day. Uh, Ten days later, they arrested somebody. Who would you think that they would arrest? Um, Maybe the the husband? Probably the husband. Mm. Yeah, so 39-year-old Timothy Bluffnick. They met each other at Quincy University. He was a Hall of Fame football star there. He, on the Family Feud, was a clean-cut, good-looking guy. She was a nurse. He was a GM of a local recycling company. He was charged with a home invasion and a murder because they had been separated on the verge of a divorce. It's like same story over and over and over, just different motives, different ways, different means. I don't know. They live. A f- they had been separated, so they lived apart. They lived a mile from each other. Um, she, Rebecca, had gotten a restraining order on him. Okay. And then in turn, you know what he goes and does? Um, does Get- a restraining order on her. Yeah. <laughs> so it's more like, oh, if you're gonna Cooking make me out look crazy, back, me? yeah, yeah. Well, um, there you go. There's your family court. There, I mean, that's this is the worst, the worst <laughs> of the worst. Oh, you need one too? Sure. Yeah. So it. Obviously seemed to be a toxic marriage. How long it'd been toxic, I don't I don't know. We don't know yet, but you just don't turn toxic overnight. Like COVID really just don't. don't make you Mm-mm. toxic. It's a long all toxic. Of a sudden. Long toxic. Um so there was when this came out that she was dead and that the husband was a suspect. A suspect. They played the few, the clip. We found out that he, this guy was on Family Feud. <laughs> and this dude, are you playing it? Steve Harvey, yeah. And now a word from our sponsors. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm gonna introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it. It's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Hola, yo soy Jackie y yo soy Jessica. Y esto es Zona del Crimen. Un podcast donde hablaremos sobre casos de crímenes reales y eventos impactantes que han quedado marcados a través del tiempo. Recuerden que nos pueden seguir en Facebook, Instagram o donde escuches tus podcasts favoritos. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By By the the Cover Cover Podcast. Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. 
don't forget the smut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months, and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure. For <laughs> sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. We are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. He's behind and the brutal killing of his estranged wife family feud family feud on family feud murder his wife you ready yes sir dressed in a bow tie and suit tim bleachnik appeared polite and good-natured when he competed on the show but now cops say he's behind the brutal killing of his estranged wife rebecca a nurse and mom of three her bullet riddled body was found inside her home after she failed to pick up their three sons from school when Bleefnik competed on Family Feud, listen to his haunting response to host Steve Harvey's question about wedding day mistakes. What's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. The audience gasped, and Bleefnik attempted to clarify. Not my mistake. I love my wife. I'm going to get in trouble for that, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> He said, "What yesterday when Bleefnik was arrested for murder, he had long hair, a far cry from his clean-cut appearance on Family Feud in 2020. The state attorney's office is calling it a home invasion and a case of domestic violence. Rebecca had filed for a restraining order against her husband, and later he filed for one against her, according to published reports. Now Tim Bleefnik is making another kind of headline, one that no one who watched the popular game show would ever imagine." <laughs> What about that glow down, glamour? <laughs> what? He looks horrible now. What did he? What happened to him? Well, I guess he became a murderer. I think he got, has CTE. He was a football player, or was he just crazy? Okay, so that that's gone viral. So people are blowing that up. You can go to TikTok. You can put in his name. That will come up. But he also did TikToks on his own and these stupid dad jokes, like. And he with his long hair, so he had his own TikTok page that's now blowing up because people are stalking who he is. Um, so there's that oh family God. feud killer. Let's talk about another shitty husband. Mm. This guy, though, is a dentist, and his name is James Craig, 45 years old. Okay. He was arrested on suspicion of first-degree murder on March 19th. Now... His wife's name is Angela, and Angela just died after being taken off life support. She had a seizure, was pronounced brain dead. But why, Caroline? Why, why, mm. why? I wonder if something was given to her. I, something that shouldn't be in her body. Yeah, so, you know, like they would work out together. So on March 6th, they got up, they worked out together together. And had a great workout, and he his routine was to go home and make her a post-workout protein, right? What a good husband. Protein shake, yeah. Muscle recovery. Yeah. This day, he put some extra protein in there. He what said, an even better husband. He said she, it was a really hard workout. Yeah, so I mean, she you needed had extra recovery, recovery extra yeah. muscle re rebuilding. Except for the extra protein was not protein. Oh, was it caca? It was not the call either. <laughs> it was actually arsenic. Oh, that's not that's not close to cacao no, or mushroom no. or coffee mushrooms. No, no. Mm -mm. I don't think Four Sigmatic sells. I do not think they do sell arsenic. They would probably be out of business, or maybe they do, and that's why they're in business. I don't know. Who's so, to say? Yeah. So she had she got really really sick that day. She had to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. He took her to the hospital. Later went to work. His coworker said that um, he was on his laptop all day, and and and, but they didn't really think anything. Later on that day, he told one of his coworkers or employees, because he's the dentist, he says, "Hey, I'm going to get a package, and don't touch it. Just don't touch it." Was it anthrax? It probably was anthrax. It probably was. And he says, "I'm going to go check on my wife because she's been sick. She's got all these symptoms, but the doctors don't know what it is." Yeah. Okay. So this package came the very next day 
wife ended up coming home. She did not die. Oh, oh no. Um. He so when he stronger f- dose. Yeah. So when she found when he found out she did not die, he ordered, and this time he ordered potassium cyanide. Just uh, Amazon quick Amazon delivery. Quick Amazon wow. actually. Wow. How who you? This is a smart guy. On Amazon, he, he did create a fake email all res- account. Good job, because you know you can't go by what's on your computer <laughs> IP address. All. Nothing, nothing, nothing can be taken. Um, no, nothing can be found. So he only told one employee not to check in the box, and another employee didn't know not to check in the box. So he checked in the box. Oh, he sent this to work. He sent it to his office, his dentist office. Let, let me give you one tip, Mr. Murder. At least do this research and send it, like go to the public library and that's where you have it sent. No, that's where you use the computer. Oh, yeah. 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 Just in case. Mm, good idea. Yeah. Or don't murder. Well, yeah, that that's probably the first option. Um so the other employee the gets... The other employee <sighs> opens up the package and he sees that... Uh, that, like, skull and X? Yes, that toxic. Poison? Is it toxic? No, I poisonous. Know, poison or I, I forgot what it was. And he's like, wait a minute. this We've never ordered potassium cyanide This is not anything. my what? key ring I bought from Amazon. This is not... Yeah. So the, the girl that he told don't open it saw that it was open, saw that it was potassium cyanide, and sealed up the box again... And just put it on his desk. Because she didn't want him to know that they knew that it was open. But bitch is DTF. She's Googling. <sighs> symptoms are, what is what is it first? What are the symptoms? Because remember, wife's in the hospital. And the- <laughs> So, <laughs> symptoms match. So, he doses wife with potassium cyanide. And she just must have a great immune system because she doesn't die, but she does go back to the hospital with like the next week after the first hospital visit. And they they were they had they known about it for a week. These employees. Well, he she was back home and she was fine. Now, yeah. okay, she, they knew he was she was sick, but they were like, no way, this can't be. This is me listening to too much true crime. But when she went back in the hospital, they decided to go with him to go visit her. And when he stepped out to talk to his girlfriend on the phone, she said something to the nurse and the doctor. Did you just slide in his girlfriend right there? Yeah. Okay. Did I mention that he had a side piece? I don't think he did. He had multiple girlfriends. Wow. You know, I'm I'm impressed with these, all these people who have these multiple wives or multiple girlfriends, and they just. That's just what they do. That's how they live their life. It's almost like they're in a polygamous cult. It's, maybe there's an episode about that coming up on oh. Thursday. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, he she didn't die the second time either. So, he puts in another order. By this time, police are kind of watching oh, him. I interrupted you. Sorry. When the He went out to talk on the phone to his girlfriend, the, the employees. Said something to the doctor? Yeah, said something to, like, one of the nurses. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and so now the police kind of know, and so they're kind of doing like their investigation. So they're looking at his laptop. They're seeing what he orders. He puts in another order for some stuff called o- Olandrin, Oleandrin, which is a substance that co- it's found in the oleander plants. He keeps Googling the most toxic or most potent poisons, most potent poisons. So he started off with the arsenic, didn't work. Then he went to cyanide, didn't work. Now he's on the olandrin, but that never comes in because she has to go back to the hospital. And when she goes back to the hospital after that third time, she has a seizure and she is pronounced brain dead. Oh, my gosh. They have six kids together. Oh, my. Are they in Utah? They're in Colorado. They're very close close and they are Mormons. (laughs) <laughs> they are Mormons. Well, that's why he had multiple partners or whatever. Cause yeah, but she didn't know about it. They so he the was FLDS. One. She was LDS. She was mm. LDS. She was LDS. People kept telling her, divorce him, divorce him, because he was horrible. And he's bad with money because he has three bankruptcies tied to him. 
Oh, but she must have been stuck with him since she was like 10 or something. She probably got married well, to him when she was kids, 12. It's probably hard. She probably started having kids, and then she just was like, I can't do anything, and I just had all these oh, babies. Oh, are you telling the story? I'm just, <laughs> yeah, you know. Are you telling your own story? No, I just. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they're Mormon. This whole they time. are Mormon. I found that out today that he would hide behind his religion all the time. Of course up. he did. And joking. So, turns out he was having an affair with an orthodontist in Texas. I need them to release her name. They have not released it yet. He had been flying her to Colorado when when Angela was put in the hospital on March 6th. His girlfriend came down on March 8th and stayed two days while Miss Angela was sick in the hospital. And he is no money. Where are the six kids? Were they like, oh, oh hey. I, and I don't know Aunt how old Julie they are. or whatever her name is. No, I want to say they're older and they can probably fend for themselves. But these people don't. They're not that old. These, the killed people, the husband and the. Well, and he did put her up in a hotel. Oh, that's so nice. No, so he probably just went and visit her in a hotel. And he's gone bankrupt three times, but he can pay for his side piece to get a hotel and a flight. And a flight multiple times. Now, police. Who is this bitch coming up here being like, okay, yeah, put me in the hotel? If, if, if you're trying to get me to come see you, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, is your wife home? No. No, yeah. you're going to take me somewhere and we're going to go like and you can leave your wife in a different state. <laughs> Let's go to a different state. It's not cheating then. It's in different Listen, zip code. <laughs> I just don't want to be put. Don't be putting me in the side hotel. Over yeah, here. I ain't sitting yeah. in the damn La Quinta. Especially a La Quinta. Now, um, police have confiscated his laptop and they see Google searches most potent poisons how, how long much, does it take how long does it take to kill him how much can you put in how much can they take so that the autopsist doesn't detect it this is, sounds like the dude from the, yeah 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 <laughs> whatever his the, name the is other husband. the ugly real ugly guy yeah with the real ugly face searched arsenic searched all these poisons how long to kill somebody undetected now March 6th, and she died on March 18th, I think. I already forgot the date. That's, you know, maybe like a two-week. You know, it's like 10 days. Yeah. This whole time, the doctors were running tests, running tests. They could not figure out what was wrong with her. They didn't know what made her so sick. They had no idea. And he was asking all the time, do we have a diagnosis yet? Do we know? Do we know what's wrong? It made him feel powerful to know that he did it right. Almost because but you didn't they didn't do it detect right. You had to arsenic. give it to her three different times. Three different times. Three different times. So, anyways, lies, lies, all the lies, all the lies. Do you have any of the text messages that he sent? Because I oh, read one of them. Here was the last thing that I saw that come up is that, okay, they're unhinged. There was a text message between. James and Angela, like husband the day after the first poisoning. Yeah, the husband and wife. Angela texts her, I feel like I've been drugged. Okay? Angela texted who? Sorry, James, husband. Oh, Angela texted James. Yeah. Saying, I, said, I feel like I've been I drugged. I feel like I've been drugged. James responds back with, given our history, I know that must be triggering. But just for the record, I did not drug you. I am what? super worried, though. Given our history? What? Turns out this isn't oh. his first time poisoning her. <laughs> oh, hell no. Five years ago, Caroline, <laughs> he poisoned her. I cannot even. I okay. Bet. Drugged her. I don't know what poisoned her. He drugged her slash poisoned her. And when he was confronted about it because she didn't, it didn't work out again. He's the worst at this. He should have found another... <sighs> way to kill her he says that he did it because he was going to kill himself and he didn't want her to be able to wake up and stop him from killing himself oh <laughs> okay. and i guess she believed him i guess she was like well this is more believable than him actually trying to poison me so now she's sick again and that's the first thing get triggered and she was right this time 
And she, well, she was right last doctors? time. She told her sisters because her sisters have told the police. Now they've confronted him with all this evidence. Okay, look, you've ordered this. Here's your order history. Here's your Amazon. It's delivered to your um, facility. And he was like, "Well, you know, she wanted to order it, but she couldn't because she didn't have the credentials. So I did order it for her, but I didn't think she was really going to use it. I never would have thought my wife would have committed suicide." <sighs> If I did, I would not have bought it. It was more like a chicken game. Like oh, she, yeah, like chicken, like see who's going to oh my gosh. chicken out the first, first. Game of chicken. Yeah. So that's his. Let me read you one of these text reasoning. messages. Okay. This is to the girlfriend, the side piece, I think. Good morning. Redacted. Thank you for taking, thank you. Oh, no. I don't know who it's from. Good morning. Thank you for taking my patient load today. I want to make an urgent plea to you. If if you if if we were ever friends, please do this favor for me. Please don't talk to anyone about what we talked about last night, including any law enforcement officers. You're under no obligation to answer their questions unless you are served a subpoena and you will do more damage then good to my family by continuing to insert yourself into this. Angela is gone and I'm devastated. Who is this to? I think that's to his employee that had already turned him in, but he didn't know. There's nothing that can bring her back, and all I want, and all I desperately want to tell uh, you all of the details so that you can better understand what's gone on behind the scenes. There's so, so much that you don't know about that I wish you did. If you knew everything, this would make so much more sense to you, but there's no use in telling you right now. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I didn't... uh, this yeah. this is a, a wild story. Yeah. I can't believe he did it five years ago. <laughs> and she's still with him, still having kids. And y'all, listen. If your husband has ever not gotten you drunk, but has ever poisoned you and was surprised when you woke your ass back up. And had to text you be like, well, look, I didn't poison you this time, bitch. <laughs> what? Run, 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 run. Okay. I saved the best for last. Oh, my gosh. There's another one. There's another one. This is a gift that keeps on giving. (laughs) This time we're going to Pennsylvania. Okay. So what's worse than a man killing his wife? Killing his dog. Uh, A daughter (laughs) killing her mama and daddy. Oh. Okay. So Justin Beck. Talks to his parents, Miriam and Reed Beck, every day. They talk on the phone. Sometimes they text, but they're older. It's mostly talking. He's older and he lives like a way he's got his own family, right? We're in Pennsylvania. But he's very close with them. Now, he has a sister named Verity Beck that also lives in the house with his mom and dad. So he lives away. Verity, who's 49 or 39, lives at home with her parents. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, these past week or so, he had only gotten text messages from his parents. He would call, and then it would they wouldn't answer, and then a text message would come, I'm not feeling good, or I'm busy, or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. He was semi-alarmed, but he didn't think too, too much about it. Now, January 17th, so 2023, he decided to stop at his parents' house and take his sister some soup because he had talked to his sister earlier that day and she was sick. Okay? Okay. When he walked up to the front porch, he had noticed, because it's dark time, all the lights in the house and outside the house were off, and that's usually not it the way it is. Mm-hmm. And there were piles of newspapers piled on the front porch. Oh. Like 10 days worth. Oh, that's a lot of paper. And so he was like, wow, dad reads the newspaper every day. I don't even know that still happens, but I guess you can still get the newspaper delivered. I guess so, delivered. yeah. 30 minutes after he arrived at the house, there was a 911 call. And the police come. Mm-hmm. James calls 911. What's his name? Justin calls 911. <laughs> police come. When they arrive, the scene was crazy. Father, Reed Beck, had been decapitated. He had a bullet wound in his forehead, but his forehead was over there somewhere else. His body was laid across on a dolly, a dolly that you like move Uh heavy boxes with. 
that's and it looked as if somebody had attempted to move his body across on the other side of the house. It's a big house. The mom had been chopped up into eight pieces and put into white garbage bags and thrown into the 55-gallon trash can recycle bin in the garage. Oh. On the floor in the garage, in the house, was a chainsaw that had, like, meat, matter, and blood still attached to it. Oof. At what point do you think this needs to happen? Chandler Halderson? Are they related? She's 49 years old. Or even 30. It don't matter. Like, she's grown. She was a special education teacher. The killer? The killer was. The killer was a 49-year-old teacher? Special ed? (laughs) Yes, in Pennsylvania. Oh, no. There's your future. (laughs) (laughs) Now, in the upstairs bedroom, there was blood all over the carpet and marks where you can tell that's where um, the mama had been cut up by the chainsaw. So, like, the floor had, like, chainsaw gashes in there. Maybe they were serial killers and she was, like, kind of being Dexter. Uh, <laughs> they were all serial killers? <laughs> Shit. Maybe she was trying to be Dexter, but she was not even close. No. A pillow on the bed had gunshot holes and gunshot residue in there. Oh, so they so concluded. Make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they concluded that she had probably put the pillow over their head when they're sleeping and shot them both in the head because Dad had one on his forehead, so he must have been sleeping on his back. Mom had one in the back of her head, so she must have been sleeping on her stomach or on the side, on her side. There's also a safe upstairs that had been tampered with. Oh, no. And what's in there? Somebody a tried to drill holes in it. And there were a bunch of tools like hammers and just things to try to get it open, but was unsuccessful. So they just left the tools there, right? Oh, sister Verity Beck was just fine. She didn't have nobody, you know, if this was a home invasion, nobody hurt sister. So, um, they determined that she had been in the house. They had, she had been in the house with her dead parents for 10 days. This house smelled horrible. When they asked her what happened, the, she just said, they're dead. Like, they're dead. After she killed them, she was using their cell phones to respond to messages when people called them so that, you know, family wasn't alarmed that they hadn't talked to the parents. And it worked for 10 days. What? How old were these parents? I don't know. You got a 50-year-old kid, so they're yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old. I mean, I guess they weren't expected they're to be retired. anywhere. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, no. They were retired. No daily trips to the coffee shop they or donuts. They would go for a or... walk every day and hold, they would hold hands. They would be seen every day going for a walk in their neighborhood and holding hands. Um... But was this lady special ed? No. She was just a special ed teacher. She was just a special ed teacher. Okay. Yeah. Um, it w- When people tried to get a hold of her, she sent them a great text and s- basically said they were all sick in the house. And so people stayed away because they thought they were sick. So maybe she said we had COVID. I don't know. Now, um, she had a deadpan look on her face. She was... No, like, Nothing, emotion, no emotion, no anything. Uh, she was very cold. <laughs> and when they got ready to arrest her, the only words she says was, what about my cats and my dog? Oh, hell, there we go. I was like, Podcast what? over. What? Yep, that explains it. <laughs> yep, there you go. I don't even have any more questions. I would have got that damn chainsaw and sliced one of her damn cats <laughs> in, half, in, uh, in half. All of them. I wouldn't have done the dog, but the cats, yep. And then I would have just blamed it on her. Oh, my God. You heard it here first. Bitch is held without bond. She killed her mommy. She killed her daddy. She tried to get in the safe. chop him up? What was she trying to get the safe? She killed him to try to get into the safe, and then she couldn't even get into the damn safe, and then she stayed there for 10 days in the ice-cold house eating soup? What the fuck did she do? I don't know. We don't know the motive. Does she live there? 
she lived there. She lived there with them. She had to have been obviously. I mean, she she has to have a disability. No, I don't think a disability. Well, I don't know. We'll know more. But she had to have been some type of crazy. Yeah, yeah. You, you got a bunch of cats. That, there you go. <laughs> Red flag number one. You got a bunch of cats. Oh, you live at that's home. Probably too flat. Right? With um, your parents at forty nine years old. I mean. Education can drive you crazy a little bit. I don't know, but that's that's my story. Her oh. name is Verity. When did it Beck. happen? This happened in January, and I came across it like two weeks ago um, on Nancy Grace. Oh, I feel like I maybe heard about it, but yeah, I did not obviously hear about it. May- I think I was in the in trial or something. It it she wasn't concerned about her mom. She wasn't concerned about her dad. She was worried about those fucking cats. And I was like, oh my God. It, why? Why? Those cats why? probably just watched her do it and I'm surprised her the on. cats didn't eat the bodies. They probably started to. Mm-mm. That is a lot of work. And what wh- she didn't do you shit. kill them. She didn't even try to clean it up. And then you have to put why do you need to chop them up then? If you're just gonna let them sit there. You don't even try to hide it? You didn't even put the trash can out. No. I don't we don't There's know a what lot went of, on whole in those lot of illness. Days. Even the thirty There's, minutes. Remember, we need updates? We have any updates from it? This is no. I tried to look for updates. So oh, this was thirty minutes. Remember, brother walked in, mm-hmm. saw what happened. There was a thirty minute window. He had to talk her into letting him like out and call the police so he had to talk some sense into her so maybe she was sitting there flipping out going crazy scared frozen i don't know um or maybe she was eating freaking um she's probably eating cat food or some shit i don't know this lady Mm -mm. oh i know i know i know okay wow i'm done we are drinking on so good port one good luck with that tiktok wine TikTok wine. We will see you on Thursday for a full episode. Wow. Where are we going? We're going to Utah. <laughs> We're going to go visit Warren Jeffs. Warren. Jeff Warren's? Warren Jeffs. Mm-hmm. And Rulon Jeffs. Okay, okay. And we're going to go keep right sweet. We're going to keep sweet. Okay? We're going to keep sweet. Okay, let's go. Um, you guys, if you are listening on the Spotify podcast, go right now, scroll to the top and push the stars, five star review. And then if you're listening to the Apple podcast, go push the stars and give us a review. Yeah. Because y'all, that was a really good episode and we had so many good stories. Okay. See y'all next week. Don't forget to stay where, stay alive and always be DTF. Bye y'all. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.